Hey y'all, hey, welcome back to my channel. It is Christian here. You're tuned in for more of my two cents. If you are new to the channel, then welcome. We are over here doing some amazing things. We're talking all things religion, spirituality, um, life, marriage, friends, family. Like we're getting down. We're getting down to the get down. And even some trending topics in media, you know, news and things like that. But ultimately, you know, more than anything over here, we support the free thinking, the logical thinking, and the critical thinking. Oh my God. I mean, like it's a muscle that more people need to exercise. So if you're into those things, then you have found the right place to just sit to the side. If you're just an observer, you, if you're a little lurker, you can lurk over here because I'm giving my two cents. You ain't even got to say nothing. Okay. But like the video, subscribe to the channel. I would love to add you to my two cents crew because that's just how we do. And if you are returning, then welcome back. Thank you so much for coming back for another video, for another great topic in discussion. I am definitely excited about this one because I know firsthand the struggle. But before we get into that, there are three points that matter most before we start any discussion or dialogue. Number one, you're not alone. Turn it around. Number two, you're not crazy. Number three, God, your creator still loves you and I do too, okay? That's the best news of it all because I think a lot of us forget that like you're not out here going through anything in life by yourself you're not the only one going through it nobody's the only one dealing with a certain sickness or disease or infirmity no one's the only one dealing with hardships or issues or depression or hurt no one's the only one grieving a loss or a death or you know anything devastating there's always someone else that's going through it with you going through it too they may not be going through it with you but they're going through it too um and i think that <laughs> leaving church leaving religion deconstructing all of that is a journey and there is a grieving process to it i would be a liar i'd be a bald-faced liar if i said that leaving church for me was not like a loss it absolutely positively was and i've done videos about you know why i quit church what, hap what has happened since I've quit church? What were the ways that I knew it was time for me to leave church? And I don't think that there could ever be enough content on that because there's always going to be people at different parts of their journey that will find that information and they, were, they will relate to it based off of where they are and what they've experienced. And that's why I'm so huge on sharing my experiences because words don't teach, experience does. That's power in you knowing and you actually um, retaining what had to be taught and what the lesson is. And those takeaways are always subjective because what I may have learned from my um, deconstruction and disconnecting from church is different from what my husband has learned and how he may, you know, carry on. Child, I gotta fix my dress, fix my little baby doll dress. Um, what he may have taken from that and that his experience. So I can't tell you what to do in your journey or in your experience but what i can do is share my own and i know in that people will be able to see like reflections of their own journey and things that they thought and words that you all have been afraid to you know say or not even known how to verbalize what you're feeling and that's what my two cents is all about and as we're growing and as you know I'm sharing more and more and you all are sharing more and sending it into me. I want you guys to always know and to feel the authentic connection, the appreciation for what you do and you being here, as well as the authentic, you know, desire to help other people reach freedom. I don't want anything else from this platform, but for other people to reach freedom and to know that you're not stuck. You're not stuck and you're not imagining things. And it doesn't matter what people tell you um your feelings have your feelings are valid they're valid and depending on where you are and what you want to achieve and how you want to connect with people you can do that authentically without there being hurt harm or shame attached to it and those are not emotions you should feel at church anyway but a lot of people have found that to be their case and to be their truth and so we're reworking and we're changing the narrative and switching that up by offering other conversations and dialogues and going in a different direction where everything isn't a judgmental tone, but it's a true compassionate conversation. 
And so that's what we engage in over here on My Two Cents. So if you've seen it to be that, I would love for you to subscribe to the channel. It helps us, helps me and us as and you know, as a fortified front to reach more people. I want more people to hear this message and to at least be able to compare it with the mainstream message of religion and Christianity or any other faith or religion that they may be seeing or watching or connected to. I think that it's great to have layers in perspective when you're on your journey in spirituality because most of us were indoctrinated. We didn't choose it, we were born into it. And as you get older, there are some things you're going to lose or leave behind because it no longer serves you, but you don't know how to do that if your mind is never open to it. And so these are those videos and conversations that I want the algorithm to favor and I want us to grow over here so more people can hear it. And then as we expand, I can like put the resources of this channel into actually having, you know, um, dare I say conferences, but not conferences. I'm not a conference girl at all. Um, but I would like to have events or like offer um, some form of, I don't want to call it counseling child because I'm, I'm, I'm not a certified counselor. Not yet. Anyway, hint, hint. That's a 2023 goal for me. But I want to be able to help other people navigate these spaces and navigate this journey. And so I can do that freely as we grow and more resources are poured into this channel. Um, yeah, and just help people to really separate, separate clean, separate free, separate without anxiety, pressure, stress, fear, doubt, or any of that. Because I felt all of those things when I left church, but I'm grateful that God's love is sufficient and it has covered me and it continues to every single day and that's why i'm able to do these videos with no hard feelings and no anger bitterness or resentment but only love and light knowing that i am shedding that on other people who too are trying to get through so let's get into today's topic today i am going to be talking about a uh, fasting hmm. we're gonna talk about fasting today we're gonna talk about it today and i'm going to share my own experiences because this is what i do this is what i do but first i got to give you all the definitions of the information so we know what we're dealing with here so what is fasting and this is just the definition of fasting because i have to tell y'all that it is in the scripture right so we know that there are people who fasted for 40 days and 40 nights we get that this has happened so it's a, it's a construct and it is an ideology that is actually presented in scripture texts for Christians. And I'm pretty sure it's across other religions and spiritual, you know, beliefs as well. Um, but the mainstream secular terminology and uh, definition is fasting is the absent, the absten, the, ab the abstention. Okay. Abstention. Okay. You're abstaining from, you are saying, no, I don't want that. Okay. Um, it's you refusing, not refusing, you not. Okay. It's you not eating something or drinking something. You're abstaining from food. Um, and I know in church, I'll explain it to you the way that I've experienced fasting, but that's the definition of fasting. I'm sorry, y'all. Let me pull my shit together. Fasting is the abstention from eating and sometimes drinking. Okay not taking in any substance just nothing having nothing to eat having nothing to drink and just consecrating yourself and focusing on something or trying to acquire something and answer clarity knowledge peace or whatever it's like you are abstaining and removing that distraction of food in order to bring your mind in on something direct but I'm gonna tell y'all why this is problematic for me, why it has been in the church sense. And then I'm gonna tell you how it worked for me in the natural sense, because this matters. And maybe it's just it. And I'm not gonna say maybe it's just me. It is me because this is my experience. I'm not out here trying to like do a broad stroke across everyone who's ever fasted to say, this doesn't work on a spiritual front. Obviously it does for some people because people continue to do it. But I'm gonna tell you what happened to me and how it didn't work for me and why I do not fast. It's just something I don't do deliberately, but we're gonna get into it. So, um, growing up in church, in the Pentecostal church, we did fast. My mom did. We never fasted as children, which I'm so surprised that they didn't withhold food from us, but we didn't fast as children, but my mother did. And we were in church when our pastor would call a corporate or corporal, 
a corporal fast for the whole ministry to do. And sometimes it would be, we're going to be fasting uh, Monday through Wednesday from morning to 8 p.m. And it's like, the hell? Well, you mean the 8 p.m.? I'm going to be asleep the rest of the time. So it don't matter if I, you know, want to eat after 8. Or they would do fasting and ending with prayer at 6 p.m. So you would fast from the morning till 6 p.m. No food, nothing but water, right? Um, and you're talking about people who have to go to work. You're talking to people who have children, who have families, who have to cook or whatever. But the whole point and purpose of this was to deny yourself. It was to deny yourself and to bring your flesh under submission and for you to focus your mind in on whatever God wants for you or whatever a message or like I said, clarity or an answer that you may be seeking, God will give that to you. And I have to tell you guys that as a child, I did not understand why my mama was not eating. I didn't get it. They didn't explain it to me. It didn't make sense. And I'm going to tell you right now, it still don't make sense. And I'm going to tell you why it don't make sense. It don't make sense to me now as an adult from the church perspective, because my points, it was never, it's never done willingly. It's never done willingly. It was not done willingly for me. The times that I did it once I was old enough and I was in church on my own, um, by my own will and not forced because I was forced to go to church as a child. Let's just be honest. If you went to church as a child, you probably didn't want to be there either. I did not. So I was forced to go to church as a kid. But once I became an adult and I was married and out on my own, and I started going to, going to church by my own, on my own recognizance, my pastor introduced fasting again, which I'd already known of it, but I didn't do it as a kid and as a young teenager. So now I'm 21, I'm 22, I'm 23, I'm 24, I'm 25, and he's calling, you know, church fast. And we're picking our days and our times that we're going to fast. Like we're going to cover it from 12 to 4, or from, you know, from 4 to 9, from 4 to midnight. It was like there were shifts that people would take where everybody in the church was praying and fasting at this time. So it was like, now I know this, it was mass consciousness. It was mass awareness on well, I know this is my time to consecrate myself and focus. So I'm not talking to nobody. I'm not watching TV at this time. I'm not reading anything on the internet. I'm going to fast from all of these worldly influences so that I can focus my mind. But my problem with this is in the church, people are doing it unwillingly. It is done and it is imposed upon people by force. Your pastor wants you to do it. It ain't even something you want to do. It ain't something you're doing it for the outcome or the answer or a revelation or the change in a situation or for peace. You're doing it because your pastor said that this is how the Lord wants y'all to start off the new year. Shout out to the Daniel fast. I did that twice, one time legitimately. The second time I tweaked it because it was no way. Let me pull up the Daniel fast, honey, because y'all don't have to get it today. Hey. Find out what it means, what it means, okay? And it's important because the Daniel Fast is a diet that is actually used and followed in mainstream as well. So it's not just church related, but it definitely has its place um, in church. And this is where I was first introduced to it. So the Daniel Fast in Christianity is a partial fast in which meat, dairy, alcohol and other rich foods are avoided in favor of vegetables and water in order to be more sensitive to God. And again, I read the Daniel fast in Christianity is a partial fast in which meat, dairy, alcohol, and other rich foods are avoided in favor of vegetables and water. So you only consume vegetables and water okay during the daniel fast in order to be more sensitive to god it is you denying yourself it is the practice of denying yourself those things that actually bring you pleasure and are fulfilling to you and that you enjoy so that god can speak to you in your lack in your insufficiency right because God can't talk to you on a full stomach. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Damn. 
it don't make no sense. It don't. It don't. Now, if you want to cut this stuff out, you want to cut this stuff out, I get it. It's probably in scripture text. Like, I get that this fast. I don't get it. I don't actually. I don't. I don't. I don't. But I'm going to tell you something. I want the green light better be on. I want y'all to get that you can eat your food and still get the message that you need from the Lord. You can be full and get revelation and get knowledge and get understanding and get spiritual downloads and get breakthroughs and get miracles, have signs and wonders to follow you with a full stomach because the CH definitely should be pronounced in stomach. You can have a full stomach. <laughs> ah, who child? You got a full stomach and get what thus saith the Lord and hear it and feel it and be sensitive to it. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm telling y'all, it didn't work for me because it was never done willingly. It wasn't. My mind was never focused. I was hungry. I was hungry. I was hungry. Little microphone, you see it. I was hungry. Let me put that back down. She was hungry. When we did this Daniel fast, I constantly thought about the meat that was missing from my meals. M M M M M M. The meat that was missing from my meals. In vegetables. I could not because my mind was not connecting with the mission, MMM. My mind was not connecting with the mission. So I was focused on the meat that was missing from the meals. It is the utter, it wasn't fear that made me do the, the fast at all but it was definitely control that made me even feel bad when i was falling off for the fast i felt condemned i felt condemnation nobody knew that i was struggling nobody knew that i was going to get meat to eat when i was in my car on my lunch break my husband didn't know i'm whispering it right now he didn't know i didn't tell him that's the problem the intent is never there the way that the person intended for it to be who called the fast for all of y'all grown asses. I'm 24, 25, sneaking to eat burgers, sneaking to eat chicken, right? I'm like, ooh, it's okay. I can do a little seafood. No, you can't do no seafood, Christian. Well, I was already small. I was very tiny. I could not afford to lose any weight. And on the Daniel fast, sis did lose weight. I did. It was giving very much Weight Watchers unintentionally. I was slimming down for the Daniel Fast. And I'm going to tell you guys something right now. That along with only eating vegetables, we were told that even with you eating vegetables, don't overdo it. Don't just try to overeat the vegetables to make up for the meat or the, the, the food that's missing. So now you're going to tell me I can only have vegetables and water, no bread, no meat, no ice cream, no dairy, none of that. And then don't try to pile up on the vegetables. So now don't even eat to get full. That's what you're telling me. Get the fuck out of here. It was so oh, mind blowing. Mind blowing. Because now that we add in I didn't choose to do this, so I'm not really on one accord with all of y'all that's doing it. I'm not ready or trained to do this, like with having a plan with meals and options and all of this. Like this is way before, for me, this is way before the vegan craze. So it wasn't like a lot of vegan options on the market. There were two vegan options on the market at the time that I recall during our Daniel fast. It was Boca Burgers and Morning Star. I said, what I said, it wasn't no tap of the brown with Target and a whole product line. It wasn't um, impossible meat. It wasn't no slutty vegan. It was none of that. It was Boca Burgers 
and Morning Star. You had the crumbles and the sausage patties, right? You had the black bean burgers. Y'all better don't play with me because like I said, I've lived this stuff. This is not stuff I've read or I've heard. I've gone through it myself. <laughs> me, a whole me. Sitting up here, hungry. 23 and me, 23 and me, fasting for nothing because I couldn't hear God if I wanted to because my stomach was louder than whatever the spirit could have ever uttered. Now find y'all somebody else's face to play in because while y'all out here calling these, these fasts, y'all not even giving good, clear direction and information on how to use this stuff impactfully because if practiced and done right with great intent, and desire for an outcome, you can focus your energy. You definitely can do that. But then it goes back to what I've asked before in previous videos about knowing when you hear the voice of God. People are out here waiting for something and they don't know if they've ever heard it or, or not. Because nobody ever gives direct information or impartation of what they should be expecting. Is God whispering? Is God rapping? Is God texting? Is God writing? What is exactly happening? Is God out here reorganizing the letters on my refrigerator for the message? What does this look like? What does it sound like? What does it feel like? So you're being given these assignments and things to do because it just sounds good to the pastor with no real tools to actually use it to your benefit. And it's dumb. So I'm sitting in my house with my husband struggling to figure out if I can eat pasta sauce on spaghetti noodles. Right? I'm trying to make a meal out of nothing. All I can focus on is how many more days we have. I break the fast and start the fast repeatedly. Then I'm feeling guilty like, damn, I ain't going to get, I ain't going to get nothing from this fast because I'm, I'm eating, I'm eating, eating, and I'm feeling good. Torture, torment for salvation is sickening and abusive. Next point, I only did it because everyone else was doing it. This is the facts. These are the truths that we see, that we found to hold self-evident. These are the truths. This is the truth. I literally was only doing it because everybody else in the church was doing it. And even though nobody in my house could see me, I still felt guilt and condemnation when I broke it or I ate something that I shouldn't have. I'm sitting in the bathroom. I'm sitting by my bed. I'm sitting in my living room, stuffing cookies in my mouth. Like a teenager on the cheerleading squad that want to make sure she can fit into her skirt. That's me as a grown person feeling this level of anxiety, stress, and pressure to fast with other humans. It's disgusting, but nobody's talking about that. Your pastor calling fast and ain't even equipping you with no knowledge or information on what you should be focusing on or how you should be doing that. If you're fasting, you should start your day off doing X, Y, and Z. If you're not drinking water, then you, you know, should get right into your day. Do some meditation. Pace yourself throughout your day. Or let's do some light crackers. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's be realistic about people who are burning energy throughout their day and may feel weak, may feel sick, may feel um, fatigued and tired. But for you... Because you wanted to call it when you probably should have just been only one fast so you could hear from the Lord. Consecrate yourself so you can be sensitive to what God wants you to speak to us on Sunday so you can stop coming up here playing our faces and talking about stuff that's not in the Bible. Can you do that? How did your fast go? Because it sounds like you went through a fast food rest or drive through Because I haven't heard no new message come through you. Group think and group act is dangerous in church. It's dangerous in life, period, but it is very prominent in religion. Next point. All I thought about was food. Like that, uh, like that little TikTok sound or Instagram sound. Uh <laughs> all night, all I think about is food. Late night and in the afternoon, diets be stressing me out. That's how I feel. The Daniel fast was stressing me out. Fasting at church through the week was stressing me out. 
I didn't even know what I was fasting for, what I was expecting to get out of it. It was always just a, when can I eat? I'm watching the clock so I can break my fast. And then they tell you, break your fast light. Eat some light. Don't just jump right back into heavy food. Every time sis was able to go and dine at Applebee's and get a steak and a baked potato without a problem. <laughs> it wasn't no problem for me to break my fast. I ain't need no salad and no soup. I didn't. Ooh, that sound good. Ooh, that sound good to me. I ain't need no soup and no salad. Shout out to the Olive Garden. I ain't need that. Sis was ready like Freddy, okay? I was ready to get into a burger and some fries. I was ready for a shake and some dessert, and I don't eat dessert after meals. I usually need my food to like digest and not feel overstuffed, but I was ready for all of the courses as soon as church let out. Being super deep and over spiritual for something that you are literally depriving yourself of for no good reason. Last point, nothing ever changed. Whew. that'll do it that'll do it didn't nothing change when i fasted in church i'm out here giving y'all the honest to god truth because the lie will be playing with you and i don't have the time to do that i want to tell you the truth and i believe this is true for other people majority of us in church were doing things just because we were told to do them not because we knew they worked. It wasn't like at the end of the fast, people were just jumping up with testimonies. Like at the end of the Daniel fast, I got a house. At the end of the Daniel fast, I got a $50 promotion. At the end of the Daniel fast, I got a car. At the end of the Daniel fast, I was able to speak fluent Spanish without ever doing a Rosetta Stone lesson. Nothing ever manifested. Nothing ever changed. Bills were still going unpaid. Mm -hmm. It was. <laughs> they were. Nothing shifted. And yes, some may be like, well, since you weren't doing it right. And I just told y'all what I was doing wrong. I was eating. I was focused on eating. I was hungry. I was angry. I was breaking the fast and starting it back. <laughs> I know I didn't do it right because I wasn't taught how to do it right. I could not do something I was not taught. I did not know. Hmm. So games, sending out assignments with no prior instruction, with no prior training, with no prior development, with no prior communication, no prior expectations set to get the results desired but majority of the time for all of these fasts in church were to benefit the church see god about what you supposed to be doing in church it wasn't about your life it wasn't about your family it wasn't about your future it wasn't about your finances it wasn't about your growth it wasn't about your stability none of that fasting was never for us at church it was always about the church fast about being more faithful this year Fast about being more consecrated, being more available, being more open for church. Everything you did came back to the center of the wheel, church. Don't fast for answers for your business. Don't fast for answers for your marriage. Don't fast for answers for your peace. Don't fast for answers for your job. Don't do that. Don't do that. No, no. Focus. I need collective energy and conscious awareness mass awareness for this church that's how y'all pastor keep getting what they want because y'all mass energy and awareness is towards the church's benefit think how powerful you could be if all 50 100 or 1000 of y'all hell could turn all y'all energy inward to getting what you desire if everybody was fasting and consecrating themselves with the thought and intent of getting what you visualize in bringing it into your reality, captivating it from dream, right? Dream and desire to achieved and realistically present in your life, physical manifestation. But now the pastor knows how to wield your, your emotion and your intellect and your um, desire and your intention 
to their benefit because that's what mass consciousness and awareness is. People are so powerful. You all don't understand that all of our power and our energy is in our mind. So all of us thinking the same thing, everybody thinking that something's a problem, everybody thinking that America is horrible, everybody thinking that one person in America is horrible, everybody focused on a pandemic, everybody focused on healthcare issues or lack or poverty or the economy crashing, that ish is mass consciousness and awareness. So when you keep seeing it manifest on the news or people continue to tell you about it, that's because they're creating it. All of us keep thinking about it and you keep telling the next person, you heard about this, you saw that, such and such just happened. And this was coming next. Girl, they said uh, Social Security ain't gonna be this by the time we this. That's mass awareness and consciousness. So when all of that creative energy continues to come together about that, that's what's going to be visible. It's only news because everybody keeps making it news. It ain't on my TV. But it's in the conversation when I talk to my grandma or my mama or my auntie or my cousins or my coworkers. Everybody keeps on talking about it. It's news. And everybody keeps aligning their energy with it happening. Oh, yeah, they say by the time this happens, we ain't gonna even be able to do this. The retirement age is gonna go up. You're, you're aligning yourself with that being the truth, as is billions of other humans or millions. So don't be shocked when it happens. So your, your pastor knows, let me get these mother, let me get everybody on a, a corporate, on a corporal, whatever they call these, a corporal fast. Everybody do it. Everybody focus on where the church needs to go. See the church, blah, 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 working in excellence, having full staff, having praise and worship, blah, 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 rolling up and all of this is done and the gate is done and the, and the parking lot been paid. They're literally commanding your thoughts on their own vision and making you fast to see it come to pass you better stop playing with me there will be no more fasting for christian not on other people's behalf never not no more eh, eh. i'm gonna eat my stomach will be full in 2023 my stomach will be full from henceforth concerning me because I understand now that whatever I need to know or I want to know or desire to know, I can tap into that full, healthy, happy, all of that. I don't have to be lacking or starving myself to get it. I just don't. It don't require that for me, baby. It just don't. Now, call it what you want, but I've elevated and evolved so much that I don't have to fast to get information that I want. I don't have to fast to get answers. I don't, I don't have to cut certain things off no more. I used to have to, well, I did, I needed to do the work. Um, like in 2020 or 2019, I needed to do the work because I was taking in a lot of stuff that was actually altering my personality. And I've mentioned this before in past videos because this stuff is very important, it's very serious. If you're, if you're not sensitive to what's affecting you, it can affect you. And so I was watching Trash TV. I was watching Mob Wives right? I was watching Real Housewives of Orange County and taking in the attitudes and the, the confrontation and all of this stuff. And I was attracting that stuff because I was sitting there watching it like bout it, bout it ready. Like I was ready to see Drita drag old girl, right? I said, I remember her name. I was ready to see her drag her. I was ready for all of the smoke and the issues and all of that. And that was manifesting in my life. I was expecting that. I wanted somebody to try me in my did. They did try me. And I had to mount up on Jesus Weagle, uh, on Wings as Eagle. I had to mount up and I had to play with these people in church because that was my main environment. So that's where most of my issues manifested. And it was no fasting that could have changed that. But once I got out of church and when we moved to Texas, I started to shed and like do away with all of those things that made me feel tense and made me feel um, any kind of need to like have a struggle or a tussle emotionally, mentally, and all of that. And so I did, I took a break from TV for almost a year. I read so much 
this is when my deconstruction journey really started and I began to expand as an individual. My mind became free and clear because I didn't have somebody telling me what to think. I knew what I needed to do. I wanted my own clarity. I, I didn't like stumbling over my words and not being able to figure out the word that I wanted to say. That's why in these videos, I can flow and go and move. My mind is so clear and free. Nothing is stopping me. I don't have to edit one, two, three. Because all of this flows from me. It's energy. <laughs> it's energy. And it's easy. Because I let go of things that used to weigh me down and I didn't know how to control the what I was taking in versus what I was putting out. Now I know how to control it. I don't have to take no more pauses from TV if I don't want to. I don't have to, because it no longer can affect me. I understand what my baseline is. I understand what my top line is. And I understand what my middle ground is. And if I feel like this is being altered based off of what is coming in, my baseline is off point. If I'm not always at my highest peak, my baseline should not be affected by what is coming in. It should not be. My middle ground should always be my middle ground. And if this is affected, it's usually someone or something close to me that is causing me to be altered in my state of being. And I have to check that. So fasting usually realigns you and recalibrates you from things that are affecting you. I'm not letting outer forces affect me anymore. So I don't have to take a break from nothing. What I'm going to do is cut you off. I don't have to hit pause. <laughs> I'm just going to remove access because you're affecting my baseline. That's it. It ain't about outside. It's about inner, inner structure. Get that right and you'll change your life. You'll change your life. Daniel Fast, cool. If you want to, do it. Do it to consecrate yourself and to realign yourself with yourself. Not to make outside things shift. You can't control what other people do. That's called witchcraft. My prayers are never to change anybody's heart, mind, or intention. It's only for me to be able to withstand whatever someone else might choose to do, but I'm not going to allow it to make me change my, my narrative of how I live, my expectations for my engagement with other humans. That is not going to happen. I'm not going to get tied up in that warp. That's a warped world where you're trying to figure things out and you're, you're stressing yourself because it's not working. You're like battling yourself, essentially. And that's not what this is supposed to be about. So fasting in turn works for the person where the mass consciousness is, is forcefully like um, being delegated. You're delegating your mass consciousness and awareness towards the needs of your ministry, the desires of your pastor. Everybody wants that outcome and you see it. But ain't nobody fasting and praying with you for you. You better do it for yourself. Maybe some of y'all have mastered that, but I'm telling you right now that if you are trying to pray to change other people, that's not going to happen because they have to be doing the work for themselves and want that for themselves. If not, you're dibbling and dabbling in some dark shit and it's more than likely witchcraft. And if you're altering anybody's lives, like we've had other people say in the comment section, you can guarantee that's coming back for you as well. So it benefits no one to be out here praying and fasting for someone else's life or situation to change. You don't have the power to do that. You don't. And if anything changes concerning them, they probably wanted it for themselves. You can't alter what happens in my life. You don't have the power to have, you don't have the power to do that. And I don't have the power to do it to you. But that's another video for, for another day. I, I'm not going there. What I did want to share before I get off of here is that I did an intermittent fast in 2000 and, um, 2019. And I did it because I wanted to lose baby weight. I had our daughter, Claire, in 2017. And I, my size, it was just more than what I was used to. And I was like, I'm not changing my, I'm not buying new clothes. Like, no, I want to be able to put these jeans on. I want to be able to tuck my shirt in. I want to be me right i felt i didn't feel like i was in my body and so i made the decision that i wanted to intermittent fast i had heard about it but i didn't know what it was and i never actually formally looked up intermittent fasting because i'm sure i didn't do it right but my version of intermittent fasting was for me to make it through breakfast and have my first meal every day at between 12 and 1 o'clock like i knew that i could work my way through it at this time i had started our business and i could 
kind of navigate my schedule to my liking, to my desire, even with small children. And I found myself waking up and having the discipline to where I didn't need breakfast and I could just start my day and make it through my day without thinking about it consciously. Hmm, you ain't had nothing to eat. Well, when I would look up and start feeling a desire for something to eat, something, right? It was, it would always be between the 12, 30, 1 o'clock mark. And I was like, dang, I'm training myself. Subconsciously, I was training myself to accept that timeline of eating. And I, I was able to curb my appetite without drinking anything, taking any supplements or anything like that to suppress my appetite. It was a subconscious thing internally that I did. And I can't tell you how to do that. It was just a desire of mine. I was able to train myself to not wake up and eat breakfast, be able to work my way through noon, one o'clock without shaking or having low blood pressure or anything like low blood pressure, but low blood or low sugar. And I was okay. And now I'm literally able to wake up and still keep on that schedule. It's not even intentional. I'll eat every once in a while if I want to in the morning, but if I don't, I work my way through my day and I'm literally at two, three o'clock sometimes before I have my first meal ever for the day. And I'm maintaining a weight that I want to maintain. It's not because I need something or I want something to happen for me. This is an outcome that I desire for my own well-being and for my own, um, my own joy and like self-love or self-acceptance. I wanted that for me. Nobody had to tell me to do it. I just wanted to do it. And this worked for me. And so now I'm three years post that, well, four, 2023, and it's still something I can do. It's still something I'm doing, practicing without guilt or force. And so that's why I say with fasting, if that's something you desire to do, it may not be the easiest thing, but I can for damn, tell, tell, for damn sure tell you, it shouldn't be a force thing. It shouldn't be a group think thing. It shouldn't be a unwilling thing. Do it because you want to and you know the outcome you desire to have. Not because somebody else told you to and it only benefits them in the long run. That's my spiel on that. All right. This video went longer than I wanted it to. I thought I was going to be able to get y'all out here in 15 minutes, but hopefully you've enjoyed it. And if you got questions about fast and drop down in the comment section below and let me know and I'll help you, you know, however I can. Um, but I gave y'all everything I had to give and I didn't even think I had that much, but I think it worked. All right. If you've enjoyed the video, then please like it, subscribe to the channel. I would love to add you to my two cents crew. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye.